I really didn't have plans to talk much about the upcoming MMORPG Ascent Infinite Realm, but when looking around at some of the coverage and impressions that the game has gotten since it went into beta overseas, I noticed a lot of things weren't mentioned, as it seems not many players played past the prologue that ends at level 30 or roughly 5-10 to 10 hours into the game, and it's at that point that a lot of unpopular systems start appearing. So a quick summary, Ascent Infinite Realm, or Air, is a steampunk MMORPG developed by Bluehole, the makers of Terra, showing signs of a 2020 release for us through the publisher Kakao. It's a faction-based grinder of an MMO, with its big selling point being its strong use of verticality and machinery, really playing into that steampunk theme. While you will be able to fight on the ground, you will make use of mounts for aerial combat and be able to construct, customize, and fight with different airships, let alone creating and managing different mechs and combat pets known as automatons, while utilizing some fun gadgets like jetpacks, gliders, and hoverboards. When it comes to content, Air does rather well. It has all the usual suspects when it comes to open world stuff, instanced PvP and instanced PvE stuff, as well as a rather robust housing system. And it even overflows with some more cute things like fishing tournaments, hide and seek, or airship races, with new stuff being added regularly since entering testing. While it's hard to make a clear call on what the game will end up including or not when it is finally released, a few things to mention about the content in Air is that there currently isn't any instanced rating, and that the game focuses very heavily on open world gameplay on purpose, and because of that, PvP. So let me touch on how the game plays. From level 1 to 30, Air plays like most MMORPGs in the leveling phase. You're guided from NPC to NPC, dealing with a main story quest and side missions that move you between massive airships to floating islands, telling you the story and the background of what's to come. At this point, Air hasn't really done anything wrong, and with its combat being one of its strong suits, it's easy to tell why people have been largely positive about the title. The combat is ability-based, with almost 30 skills at your disposal, tons of way to customize it, and a soft lock targeting scheme. Some abilities hit no matter what, while some create projectiles that can be dodged, and the interplay between abilities lend themselves to combos. You also have tools at your disposal for iframes, mobility, and to control targets, and the encounters, so far, have a lot of room to play well. Many attacks are avoidable, and even bosses or elite monsters meant for way more than one person can be tackled if you're skilled enough. As a comparison, it kind of sits in between Blade and Soul and Aeon. The mounted aerial combat feels a lot like underwater combat from other games. It's the exact same skill set, but now you have the Z-axis to play with. Airship and mech combat is a bit clumsy control-wise, but it makes up for it in sheer spectacle. I've put a lot of time into the game, and it still hasn't gotten old firing missile salvos at giant flying dragons or griffins, and neither has gliding. The thing is, that at level 30, some stuff goes down and the game pretty much changes. For one, you find yourself on this large open world map with very little variety between regions split right down the middle with each faction controlling one side. The story quests stop and in their place each of the regions has their own set of like 6 or 7 daily quests. However, the regions are all separated by level and item level so usually only one set of dailies is relevant to you. On top of the region dailies, you have quite a few overlapping chore lists that the game gives you every day through menus. This ends up being the real structure of the game, doing your chore lists. Now the interesting thing here is that because there is quite a variety of content, during a game session it doesn't feel that grindy. Instead, the grind builds up day after day, because while there are lots of different things you might do each day, you do them each and every day. And because the rewards that come from things like achievements, titles, and completing entries in your collection book, or just the raw rewards from crossing out something on your to-do list being meaningful, it's in your best interest to do things that you don't like consistently. And that grind is insidious, especially knowing that you'll be doing that from around level 30 until kind of like, until you can't stomach it anymore, because the game doesn't place a hard cap on leveling, and the rewards you earn from this are always relevant and in demand. 
The thing with this though, is that it doesn't feel like a problem at first. In fact, it feels really engaging. It almost feels like you have so many things that you can do, but one day you just log on and you've just had enough. There is also this weird contradiction to the game where there's this large variety of potential activities with no real structure attached to it, but the game doesn't offer you much freedom. It's actually kind of the opposite. All the content seems to be gated by limited entries, tokens, or arbitrary soft limits, or from participation in other stuff, and the non-combat activities and life skills are little more than diversions, all feeding into the combat playstyle, with not enough depth, content, or substance to them to drive gameplay or be the reason that you play. And what makes everything worse? is the different regions are all so small, so unremarkable, so similar in palette and appearance that there's almost no allusion to the tasks, only the act of completing the task in these small lifeless areas on a map that looks like every other place you've been before. Most of us have played MMORPGs, we know that there are only so many different types of quests, but games dress them up in the places they take place in for this reason. A kill quest can feel different if you have to go track down and find a mama bear in a cave versus if you need to infiltrate a castle to kill a king. Same type of quest feels different enough. It's one of the reasons a lot of people recoil if enemy models are reused and recolored too often. Air doesn't care. It's all so bare, it's all so samey, it's all so forgettable, it's all so soulless. You feel like you're playing systems and not a game, for the purpose of slowly accumulating tokens, stones, and currency to help increase your character's power level in ways that many people have awful feelings about. The RNG, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, etc. enhancement systems. This comes complete with failure penalties, durability loss, penalty preventers, as well as tiers, grading, and random item levels. But don't worry too much, if you're having a tough time, you can purchase things in the cash shop to make the enhancing experience more convenient. It's found in the tab right over from the Ascent Infinite Realm Battle Pass. While we're talking about systems people may want to know exist, the game uses an energy labor system for life skill actions. This regenerates faster while online or using a special potion, and combined with auto fishing, hugely expandable inventory, and daily rewards for long lengths of time spent logged in, Air has the potential to be one of those games that hardcore players might feel they need to leave on overnight. The game also has time-locked chests and keys, dungeon limit tickets, daily resets, auto-pathing, soft subscriptions, and a non-combat pet system that looks awfully familiar to Black Desert, complete with pet slots, skill resets, and auto-looting tied to them, on top of all the typical freemium-style monetization methods and retention methods you may be familiar with. I should also mention that it is created in Unreal Engine 3, which is a bit of a boogeyman to the MMORPG crowd at the moment, but Air so far has actually ran decent. No crippling lag spikes and no serious stuttering. It's not great, but it's definitely playable and even smooth at times. Now, funny enough, I typically don't care about most monetization methods, and because I have a really powerful rig, performance generally isn't a concern for me. The thing that really turns me off about Air is that the game is designed to be able to absorb as many hours as you are willing to put into it, and with its open world focus, where PvP is inevitable, especially once your daily starts sending you into the enemy faction side, you're in this arms race against the people with no lives, and the moment they gain a level from grinding monsters that give 0.0001% experience each, or spend 500 hours farming the same 5 respawning crows to upgrade a piece of gear, it kind of forces the hand of every player who wants to be viable or competitive, which I don't mind if it's achieving something or completing a challenge, but through sheer volume of time spent doing stuff that makes you want to gouge your eyes out, no thanks, like I'm, I'm done with that. And I've already seen in like the one month that the test has been there, power gaps that have allowed people to one-shot me, so it's not like these are going to be small things, and where a lot of games typically have like just your gear that you upgrade and enhance with these like punishing systems, Air actually has a whole bunch of stuff, and the more cynical part of me almost thinks that the reason they allow you to customize your abilities, 
your mech, your airship, and your combat pet on, on top of your gear is so that they can like pentadip in this long tail progression system so that they just keep you playing for as long as possible. That's the cynical part of me. The cynical part of me also thinks that almost all of these systems are obscured by that prologue so that people's first impressions don't see these things. Like when I saw the battle pass as well as the time locked chests and keys, man, like I rolled my eyes so hard I got a headache. And just to back up a bit, I think PvP MMORPGs are just really hard to do well, and these grind-heavy Korean-style MMORPGs are just, I just haven't seen it done right yet. But I know that some people actually like the way that these games are made, it's these grind-heavy, it might not be worth your time, but it'll occupy your time kind of games. All that said, I really, really like the aesthetic of the game. Steampunkified monsters look dope, and while the game doesn't have rating, they have a solo and group-based multi-floor tower that has random bosses combined with random room effects to make it more difficult, which is actually really fun. The limited entries a day kind of puts a damper on it. I've seen something like this done in a few games before, and I'd love it if it just was in way more games. But aside from like any personal issues that I have with the game, I think the biggest issue with Ascent Infinite Realm is that it doesn't have a thing. A reason to play the game despite its issues. Games like Terra and Black Desert have incredible combat. Games like SWOTOR have beloved IPs attached to them. Air has kind of the same appeal Bless did, novelty. Now, to Air's credit, on the scale of quality and scope, Air is much better off than Bless ever was. It's a rather complete game. There's a lot of stuff in this game. And Air might damn well release as the best of the worst games in the genre and be a direct upgrade for the people still playing games like Echo of Souls, Riders of Icarus, Blade and Soul, Aeon, or those other games that already share many of the same issues. Between now and release, a lot of things could change, my opinion on the game is that it's just like hollow and devoid of personality. It's kind of a very sad but logical step in the way a lot of MMORPGs have been going where they just further take out the RPG element and the why you'd play the game, gamifying the tasks instead. And what's even sadder still is more recent MMORPG players might not know any different and think that these systems are what define the game and streamlining these systems make the game better. It just makes my stomach sick to think about. But with that, if there is something that you want to see of this game, let me know in the comments below. I also want to take a second here to let you guys know that I'll be trying something from now until the end of June. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 2pm PST, I'm going to be doing a short, maybe one or two hour live stream over on Twitch, links in the description. So please come on by, say what's up, argue about games with me. And with that, until next time, this is Fever. Peace.